Hi there, my name is Nelly Mabaso. Over the past three lessons, we have been looking at reflection closely. Today, we are going to investigate the refraction of light. By the end of today's lesson, you will be able to define refraction of light and draw a simple ray diagram to show how light is refracted through different objects. Remember that when we put the pole into the pool, it looked like it changed shape. We discovered in lesson two that this was because the light from the pool bends as it leaves the water. This was the diagram we drew to explain what we were seeing. Here, we can see that the light bends as it leaves the water and our brains think that the light travels in straight lines so it appears as if the pole has been bent. We call this refraction. What is actually happening here is that when light moves towards a boundary like moving from air into water, it may be reflected at the boundary or it may cross the boundary. When this happens, light may change direction. But is that all that is happening? And why does the light change direction? First, we need to take note that although we draw only a thin line to represent the path that light travels, the line actually represents a whole bunch of light rays together. We refer to this bunch of light rays as a wave front. So, instead of drawing just a single line, we could draw a series of lines that lie at 90 degrees to the direction of wave motion. Now, these lines together represent the wave front and they will hit the boundary together at the same time. To illustrate what happens at a boundary, we are going to compare the wave front to an axle of a car with two wheels. The wheels are approaching a boundary between tarred road and a patch of mud. Watch carefully what happens. As the wheels approach the mud, the wheels on the left will move into the mud first. Now it is harder for the wheels to move in the mud than on the tar, so these wheels slow down. But at the same time, the other wheels are still on the tar and keep moving at their original speed until they also move into the mud. Only once they are also in the mud will both wheels be moving at the same speed. The result of the wheels moving at two different speeds is the axle changing direction. The wheels turn to the left of the screen, but it changes direction because the wheels have changed how fast they are going. The wheels changed speed because they moved from a surface that was easy to move on to one that was difficult to move in. Now watch as the wheels move from the tar to the mud again. But this time, the wheels will move into the mud in a direction that is perpendicular to the boundary surface. Watch the wheels move. What do you notice? That's right, the wheels didn't change direction. They simply slowed down because it is harder to move in the mud than on the tar. So, if we compare the first situation to the second situation, we can see that there is another condition for the wheels to actually change direction. Can you see what it is? We can see that for the wheels to change direction, they must actually move into the mud at an angle. But in both cases, the wheels still slow down. These wheels on the axles were a representation of a light wave front. The tar and the mud represent different media that light can move through. The medium that light travels through can be anything that allows light to travel through it, such as air, 
water, glass, even perspex or plastic. Light travels faster in air than in water or glass. When light moves from one medium to another, it can slow down or speed up depending on the media on each side of the boundary. When light moves from air into water, it will slow down. But when moving from water into air, it will speed up. We have also noticed that while changing speed, light may change direction as well, depending on the angle the light strikes the boundary. From everything we have just discussed, do you think that you could write a definition for the refraction of light? So, how did you do? Refraction is the change of the speed of light as it moves from one medium to another. This change in speed may result in a change of direction depending on the angle at which the light hits the boundary. So, now we know what refraction is and why light changes direction. We need to see if we can predict which way the light will move. To do this, we will need to conduct an investigation. So, let's cross over to the lab. Hello there guys. Today we're going to investigate how the light travels through a rectangular perspex block. Now I'm going to put my block on a white piece of paper and draw a mark around it. Now I'm doing this so that once I've done my investigation, I can be able to measure my angles. Now, we need to measure our angles to help us discover any relationship between the angle at which the light strikes the block and the angle at which the light is reflected by. Now, remember when we dealt with reflection, we measured the incident angle from the normal. Do you remember what the normal is? Let me remind you. The normal is an imaginary line drawn perpendicular to the boundary. Now, the normal is a very useful reference line which can be used to measure angles even though the surface on the boundary is not straight or smooth. Now we're gonna dim our lights so that we can see properly how the light travels through the perspex block. Okay, have a look here. I've already prepared for my experiment. I've outlined the block. I've drawn in the normal already. And I have my incident ray at 45 degrees to my normal. Now let's have the light on and see. Coming up, there we go. Now the light is traveling through on the straight line, but now I want to show you something. Let's put in the block and see what happens. Do you see what happens? The light has changed direction. First, as it enters the block, it changes the direction, and when it leaves the block, it changes the direction once more. Now what I'm going to do I'm going to mark the point where it lifts the block. Up to where the ray travels. And then I'm going to connect my two points. There we go. Let's switch off the light. Now using a protractor, I'm going to draw a normal from the point where the light left the block. Now remember that the normal is always 90 degrees from the surface. There we go. I'm gonna join my two points. Now we have the normal from the point where the light left the block. Now I'm going to join the two points from where the light entered the block up to where the light left the block. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to measure my angles. I'm going to start with this one here. Angle of refraction from the time the light traveled into the block. Using my protractor, it's 
it's at 30 degrees. There we go. And now I'm going to measure this angle here. The angle of incidence just before the light left the block. And it's also 30 degrees. There we go. And my last angle, the angle of refraction from the point where the light left the block, this angle here. There are two angles equal to 45 degrees and two angles equal to 30 degrees. Now let's go back to studio and analyze these results. Bye. Thanks, Aaron. That experiment has given us a lot of data to examine. We can now see what happens when light hits the block at an angle of 45 degrees. The light ray enters the block and is refracted. Notice the ray moves in a straight line until hitting the second boundary. Here, the light is refracted again and leaves the block at an angle of 45 degrees. Can you see a pattern with the angles we have measured? Both the incident ray and the emergent ray form an angle of 45 degrees with opposite sides of the block. These sides are parallel to each other. Next, we need to see if there is a pattern that we can use to predict the change in the direction of a light ray when moving from one medium to another. Remember that light travels faster in some media than in others. You can think about this in terms of the molecules that make up the medium. Can you see that it is easier for light to travel through air where the molecules are further apart than for light to travel through perspex, for example, where the molecules are very close together? We measure how easy it is for light to move through a medium using a quantity called optical density. If light can move through a medium quickly, such as air, it will have a low optical density. If light moves through a medium slowly, we say that the medium has a high optical density. Perspex has a high optical density. So with our block, we have the light moving from air to perspex to air again. The light is moving from a low optical density to a high optical density, to a low optical density again. We notice that the speed of light is changing from fast in air to slow in perspex to fast in air. Let's consider the first boundary the light hits in more detail. We are going to compare the size of the angle of incidence with the angle of refraction. You can see that the angle of incidence is bigger than the angle of refraction. So the light moved closer to the normal. Therefore, as light moves from a low optical density to a high optical density, we say that the light is refracted towards the normal. The angle gets smaller. This happens when the speed of light decreases. Let's now consider the second boundary. Here, the light is moving from a high optical density, perspex, to a low optical density, air. Now let's compare the angle of incidence with the angle of refraction here. This time, the angle of incidence is smaller than the angle of refraction. 
So the light is moving away from the normal because the angle is getting bigger between the normal and the light ray. This means that as light moves from a high optical density to a low optical density, we can say that the light is refracted away from the normal. The angle gets bigger. Here, the speed of light has changed too. Inside the block, the light was traveling slower but increased speed when crossing the boundary into air. So, let's put all the facts we have collected together. This diagram shows what happens when light moves through a rectangular perspex block. And now we have a completed ray diagram, which shows how light is refracted through a rectangular perspex block. Now I want you to apply what you have learned in today's task. Using different shaped objects, investigate how light is refracted through these objects. Specifically look at how light moves towards or away from the normal. You can use a glass filled with water and use a torch as your source of light. You can cover the torch with some cardboard that has a small slit cut in it. Make sure to draw diagrams of what you see so that you can communicate the results of your investigation. Here's a final thought for today's lesson. Now that we know that refraction occurs because there is a change in the speed of light when moving across a boundary, what does this tell us about the nature of light? We know that waves are refracted, but don't particles change speed when they move into a different medium? The tennis balls bounced off the walls, but if I threw a stone into a pool, it wouldn't stop. It would just slow down and sink to the bottom of the water. So maybe light could be described as a particle after all. Do join me for the next lesson when we will look at more examples of refraction. Yeah.